Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a fun one. We got the brand new patch notes for update 12.2 Taigo or codename Tiger, which is on the test server. By the time you see this video today, it's on test servers today for PC. It comes to live server July 7th, July 15th for console respectively. Now there is a ton of stuff to go over in today's video. So please make sure to check the uh, description and the bottom of the video for timestamps if you want to jump through it but if you're here for all the details we're going to go through all the need to knows uh, everything that's uh, coming with the update all the changes and then my opinion on some of the changes as we go through them so let's go ahead and get started first things first obviously this is the brand new map Taigo, code name tiger coming to PUBG. it's newest 8 by 8 map and it's going to be only available in fpp tpp but solos and squads only there will be no duo queue for the map initially and we don't know if when it goes to live servers if they're going to add a duo queue or not right now all we know is solos and squads for test server now it'll be up to 100 players bots will be able to spawn in this map there'll be clear weather no red zones hallelujah and for the first time ever there'll be wildlife two different types of bird varieties reside throughout Taigo, reacting to player movement and gunfire. So if you shoot near these birds, if you are running through the trees or bushes near these birds, they could disperse giving your position away. Pretty cool. Taigo is going to be available in custom matches as well. So I can do some fun testing in the sandbox mode since I am now a PUBG partner. The biggest change is the comeback BR, which is an interesting name they chose to go with here. They chose very, very, very specifically not to call it a respawn mode, a comeback BR. So listen to this. Comeback BR is an exclusive second chance mechanic allowing players who die in the first blue zone phase the chance to drop back into the fight later in the match. So the way this is going to work is if you die within phase one of the circle, during phase two, you're going to be brought to the Gulag Island, the Comeback BR Island, and you're going to be facing off against all of the other would-be dead survivors who died in Phase 1, who had now been transported to this island during Phase 2. So the rest of the game is still being played during Phase 2, and you're in this little island. You have to survive the timer of the island, not kill everybody. You have to survive the timer of the island, and once phase two is over and phase three starts, that's the end of the timer. Whoever's left alive on the island will be brought back into the game via the, the uh, helicopter, the Chinook helicopter. You can jump out of the helicopter at any given point and then parachute back down with your teammates. In a couple of different videos and, and photos we've seen with and without guns, but always with gear, like with a backpack and a vest. So it's not very clear what you come back with, but you are going to come back with some type of loot or gear. Now, while you're inside of the comeback arena, you must find loot and items to stay alive, meaning you're going to have to treat it just like it's its own mini battle royale. You have to loot for your items. You have to fight the blue zone that's going to be coming in and you have to fight the other players that are going to be there. There are no bots or knockdowns in the comeback BR. Another big, big change is the self AED, also known as the self Re revive kit. Self revives are an exclusive second chance mechanic to the new map, giving players another opportunity to stay in the fight. The self AED is a world loot item that allows players to revive themselves when dead, but not out without the need of a teammate and can be used in solos. I repeat, this can be used in solos. I don't know about that one, PUBG. <clears throat> to utilize it, you simply press the F key or the at interact key, whatever that key is for you. As long as you have one in your inventory, it'll start the mechanic in a few seconds. Boom, you're up and you're back into the fight. What's interesting is that if you're in a squad game and you have a, a self AED, but your teammates don't. They all get knocked. They haven't gotten flushed. So they just got knocked. You get knocked. Your team is still alive because you have the self AED, just like in Call of Duty. If your buddy gets knocked and then you get knocked, if one of you 
has a self res and it can use it. You, you both stay alive. They self res and they can revive you. It's going to be pretty interesting. And inside the little video that PUBG posted, they even said, be prepared to finish your kills. If you're not getting your kill confirmed, AKA be prepared to flush more. So I'm going to say on that new weapons, we got the K2 556 assault rifle, and we have the, uh, Mark 12 556 DMR. Now what's interesting about the K2 is that it has a damage of 41 single burst, full auto fire modes, muzzle velocity of up to 880 meters per second. So when we drill down all of the stats that the weapon has, it is awfully close to the G36 here and the QBZ, which both have 41 damage and 870 meters per second bullet velocity. <clears throat> so it'll be interesting to see uh, how this weapon really stacks up to those other 5.56 five, ARs, if it's a copy pasta sort of thing, or if it has its own feel and its own uh, sound and its own recoil mechanics. That That's going to be fun to see. Now, it does take all the same magazine muzzle attachments, but you cannot put a lower rail on it and you cannot put a stock on it. What that tells me is that the recoil pattern for this weapon is most likely going to be easier to control than that of a G36 or a QBZ, which could be kind of nice. It can make it a very, very easy to control version of an M4, maybe. All right, now we have the Mark 12 5.56 DMR. Now this is a world spawn Taigo exclusive DMR and its closest comparison is actually between the QBU and the SKS. It's kind of like a blend between those two, which makes me really excited because I love the SKS, but this has some fun features of the QBU, such as a deployable bipod and a very fast muzzle velocity and uh, bullet trajectory. So if we look at all the stats for this weapon it has 50 damage, single fire mode, of course, 20 to 30 rounds. If you have an extended mag and a 930 meters per second, but look at this all lower rail grips and no stock attachments. So it has a built-in cheek pad. It has a built-in bipod, but you can also put a lightweight grip on it, which for those who don't know, watch my ultimate attachments guide video link in the corner of your screen somewhere tells you everything you need to know about attachments in PUBG. What's the best ones to use on which weapons, a lightweight grip on this thing is going to be insane. And then if you can go prone, you got the deployable bipod. Like this is going to be a monster. If we compare it to its closest cousins, you got the QBU with 48 damage and 945 meters per second, which means it's just about as fast as a QBU as far as bullet velocity. So your bullets are going to zing. And the SKS has a little bit more damage. So 53 compared to 50 of the Mark 12, but much slower bullet velocity at 800 meters per second. So this could potentially be that sweet spot DMR that gives just enough damage to feel like it's actually hitting and hurting the target but with a good enough bullet velocity that you don't suffer at 300 plus meters away from your target. So really keen to try this one out. Really, really keen to try this one out. All right, now we've got the new Hyundai Concept Pony Coupe. What's interesting is that PUBG has been doing some Hyundai um, partnerships over the past few months. This is an old uh, crossover like 70s concept they did where it's a two door, but it's a two plus two. So it has two seats in the back. So you can have four people riding in it. It's four wheel drive. It has a thousand HP, which is equivalent of the, the normal four door vehicles in PUBG. But look at this maximum speed is 150 kilometers per hour. That is fat. That's like motorcycle fast. This is going to be a really fun vehicle. So all wheel drive great for off road, uh, good HP, great speed. The only downside is that because it's shaped like the uh, cyber truck, your passengers in the back cannot shoot from the vehicle. So. You can only have driver shooting pistols and one passenger shooting their automatic weapon. So that's the way they kind of nerf the speed and the all wheel drive of this vehicle. Now I'm not going to go into detail on the survivor pass. I just did a video on that showing all the new items coming in the survivor pass in HD. I'll link that in the top of your corner or in the description below. Please go check that out. But just in essence, there's 50 levels. There'll be a bonus 20 levels. If you complete over 50, you'll get extra G coin and extra skins and extra battle points and all that kind of good stuff. So go check that out.
something brand new and something that I'm looking forward to is a new addition to the shop called Your Shop. Your Shop is going to uh, post old items that are no longer available that are going to be customized, quote unquote, customized to your preference. And they'll bring back old items at a discount. So like the old helmet that you wanted to buy, the old weapon skins that you wanted to buy that you missed the sale on, they'll bring those items back at a pretty good discount from what we can see here, like 40% for the fe festive flannel uh, M4 SKS and, and some other ones there. So that's going to be really interesting. It says, be sure to check back each time your shop reopens as available items and their discount rates vary each time. So I wonder if this is a timed thing. Like the, your shop is only open during certain times for you. We'll see. Uh, we actually got a loop buff finally for PUBG. So item spawn rate increases and let me clear something up here. So items have been buffed for Erangel, Miramar, Sanhok, and Vikendi, but not a total of 123%. They've been buffed by these percentages. So Erangel has a 24% loot buff. Miramar has a 28% loot buff. Sanhok has a 16 and Vikendi has a 28% loot buff. Of all these maps, the worst offender was Miramar. So I'm glad to see that it has a high loot buff, but I, I don't, it's, I don't know if it's going to be enough. We'll have to see, but good to know that they're actually buffing the loot. We've got some pretty good performance improvements. So they've uh, optimized the internal logic to reduce stuttering, hitching, and frame drops. They've improved CPU usage to reduce hitching, stuttering, and frame drops. And they've improved uh, performance to optimize relate relationship to the special care package status. Honestly, I don't think it's going to do anything for anyone. But these two are good to see. The K2 and the Mark 12 have been added to TDM. So you can make cust custom loadouts for those two weapons. Custom matches have now been added where the uh, Taigo's weather has been added. The new items have been added to the spawn tab for the partners who want to spawn different fun stuff. Uh, and now in the custom match and in the training mode, we now have quad. We have the Lynx AMR. We have the Mark 12, the K2, uh, soccer field ball. All kinds of stuff has all been added to custom matches and training mode. You can now change your uh, character's gender and no longer cost BP. They've now added a chat whisper system so you can whisper other PUBG players in game, kind of similar to what like Counter-Strike or StarCraft does, but they are gonna limit it where when a player is replying to you, if they're in game, they can only reply to you with a certain number of like pre predetermined messages. That way it reduces like the chances of people teaming in a match or, or something like that. And you can't do it in esports mode, so there's no worries about people communicating during ranked modes and telling people where each other are like that kind of that sort of stuff. The infamous hideout is having some things added to it, but please be careful here, guys. If you haven't watched my video on the hideout and the contraband system, go take a look at that again, link in the uh, top of your screen or in the description. I go over everything you need to know about it, but they're adding a new type of crate, the cataclysmic magma contraband crate. And inside of that crate, you're going to have, uh, the Cataclysmic Mag Magma SKS, the M416, the Mosin, the K2, the new assault rifle, and the Vector. And the percentages for those are all shown here in this, in this chart. You can go take a look at them. Keep in mind, keep in mind, you can get duplicates with this system. So like me, I've gotten two of the Desert Digital Micro Uzis. I've gotten, I think, a couple of the crossbows. So just watch the other video I did on this and, and be careful. It's it's gambling. It's it's gambling, okay? A little quality of, of life improvement in, in regards to the game brightness. They've actually added a little image in game here that when you slide the slider up and down, it'll show you how bright and how dark it actually will look for you in game to give you a reference point so that you can better determine your best brightness settings. If you're looking for help on how to dial in your settings, of course, don't forget I have an ultimate PUBG guide for your settings how to get the best FPS and the best visuals. Link to that in the top of your screen or in the description below. And of course, they've added some other items and skins that are not part of the season pass. You can check out the patch notes for your own interest there, or I'll show them when I get in game and I'll make another video on it there. All right, now we got quite a few bug fixes coming in with this patch, some really good stuff. So I'm not gonna go over all of them. Again, you can go look in the uh, patch notes yourself. If you wanna dial in point by point, but a couple of the important ones are 
the R1895, the revolver animation for the no recoil has been fixed. They fixed an issue where players' footsteps, vaulting, and climbing sound effects sounded different depending on the location of another player at a distance. That one's huge. That one's huge. That's where you, you, you hear a player and you think they're on a different type of surface or they're a different distance away than what you really thought. That's a big one. They fixed a bug where the SMG could be used in the driver's seat of motorcycles, scooters, and ATVs. That was a pretty, pretty bad bug. I don't think a lot of people exploited it though, which is good. Uh, they fixed the one where you could be teleported to a different location related to a destroyed motor glider. That made for some funny content though, I must say. All right, guys, and that wraps it up for today's patch notes review. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, of course, leave a thumbs up, share it with a buddy, and get subscribed if you're new to the channel. We've got a ton of new PUBG content coming out, so keep it locked here. Uh, sorry this video is getting out a little bit late. I know you guys are just seeing it, uh, what, Wednesday, the day this goes to test server. I've been super busy today at work. We went and saw three more houses, and we actually put an offer in on our first house tonight. So fingers crossed for my wife and I, we're hoping uh, everything goes smoothly and they accept it. Of course, I'll keep you guys updated on that process. So thank you again for the love and support. I will see y'all on the live streams tomorrow for the test server. And of course, in future videos, well, as we dive into the new Taigo update, I'll see you guys then. Take care. Peace.